Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We all know that emission norms set up a standard value for the maximum acceptable range of emissions. But have you ever thought of how the emissions are measured? Well, in this video, we're going to discuss a device that is used for measuring the amount of hydrocarbons emitted in the engine exhaust gas. We will discuss what a flame ionization detector is, its principle, construction, working with advantages and disadvantages. A flame ionization detector is a device that measures the amount of unburnt hydrocarbons emitted from internal combustion engines. This device is also used to measure emissions from industries like petrochemical, pharmaceutical, and natural gas markets. As we all know, emission of hydrocarbons result in serious health and environmental hazards. The role of these devices become inevitable to check whether the emission is within the acceptable range. Now, let's move on to the principle of the flame ionization detector. When pure hydrogen gas is burnt alone, it will not produce any ions. But when hydrocarbon molecules are burnt along with hydrogen, the carbon atoms in them ionize. The ions start moving towards the electrode in the FID setup, generating an electric current. The ionization current produced due to the burning of hydrocarbon will be proportional to the amount of carbon atoms in it. That is, the response produced in the detector for butane, a 4-carbon compound, will be 4 times as methane, a single carbon compound. Hence, flame ionization detector acts as a carbon counter. The hydrocarbons are measured and expressed in the units of parts per million of methane, that is, parts per million of hydrocarbons that contain the equivalent of one carbon atom. When it comes to construction, the FID analyzer consists of a hydrogen air burner and ion collector assembly. There are individual inlets for hydrogen and air. Instead of hydrogen, hydrogen helium or hydrogen nitrogen mixtures can also be used for improving the flame stability and for decreasing the flame temperature. There is also a column through which the sample of the exhaust to be tested will be fed in. Then. There is an igniter which is used for ignition. The ion collector assembly consists of two electrodes to create a potential difference. The positive electrode, also called the polarization electrode, is placed nearer to the nozzle of the inlet gases and the negative electrode, also called the collector electrode, is placed at the top of the flame. These electrodes are connected to an electrometer which in turn is connected with an amplifier. The amplifier sends the signal to the computer display. Now, let's see how this works. Hydrogen and air are let inside the burner through the respective passages and then the igniter ignites a flame. At this time, the flame will be free from ions. But when a sample gas containing hydrocarbons is introduced through the column, the carbon atoms ionize in the flame and start moving towards the negative electrode. The flow of ions induces an electric current which is measured by the electrometer and it is amplified in the amplifier. The signal from the amplifier is then fed into the computer which shows the result in the the form of analog display. The result will be in the form of a graph with time in the x-axis and the number of ions in the y-axis. Whenever the sample contains hydrocarbons in it, the carbon ionizes, resulting in the ionization current, which is represented as a spike in the graph. Modern analyzers are capable of giving digital outputs. This is how the flame ionization detector works. This analyzer is highly sensitive, rapid, accurate, and can be used continuously. But this cannot be used for measuring inorganic compounds in the exhaust and the sample is destroyed in this test. That's all about the flame ionization detector. Stay tuned for more interesting videos. We'll meet up again in the next one. Until then, bye!